Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, we're going to take this photograph over here. It looks like it's possibly taken outside, hard to say. We're going to take this photograph and change the background and give it a custom photo studio style background. Fairly straightforward, and most of the work is actually involved in making that studio style background in there. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this whole process is done. I'm just going to get rid of this one here. And we'll start by making a new file. File new, blank file. Now set it at the default Photoshop element size and then just reverse these two sizes here. So make the width four and the height six. And I'll leave that at 300 pixels per inch. Choose OK, there it goes. There's our basic file. Let's now go back over here to the girl image and I'll grab the background, just drag it over here and drop it in like that. We can then close that. So we now have the picture of the girl inside that file. Notice how the picture image is a little bit larger than the background. So we have a little bit of flexibility here on moving this around. But we'll take a look at something which you may want to do on that to give you a little more flexibility a little further on in the video. Maybe add a bit more at the top. Okay, so there's the basic picture. You can now hide that. We'll get back to that later. Let's make a new background in here. There we go. Here's our new background. And on this background, let me just zoom in a bit here so you can see this. Make it as large as I can. There we go. That's pretty good. Now you need to fill this with something. It doesn't matter what it is. I have the Colors here set at the defaults, foreground black, background white. If you don't have that, just click that little icon right there. And that will then set those to foreground and background. Just take the paint bucket and fill it with black. Again, it doesn't matter what it is. You just have to have some pixels on this layer. Now over on the filter menu, come down to render and clouds. There we go. Now the way this works is it creates a random pattern in here. If I do this again, you'll see that we get a different pattern this time. So render clouds, different pattern. Just do that one more time. Render clouds, different pattern. So it's a random pattern that you get. And it's made up of the background and foreground colors. There's the background color white. Here's a foreground. And it's just a random made from those two. If you want to have this in color, we'll be colorizing ours with a different technique. But you can start out with a color. Just choose a colored foreground and background colors in there. And the cloud will then be made up of your background foreground colors and then blending between those two colors. Okay, step one, new layer, clouds for the background. We're now going to blur this out a little bit. So back up to the filter and come down to blur and go to the Gaussian blur. And I have mine set at 30 pixels. So just type in right there 30. And you can see that if you click over here to preview, there it is before and here it is after. It just kind of softens that up and choose OK. Now at this point, it's actually too soft. It's too, too blended. And we're going to be fixing this by adding in some texture back into this in just a couple of steps. But first, the next thing I want to do is I want to darken the corners down in here. Easy way to do that if you have a newer version of Photoshop Elements is the correct camera distortion filter. Click on that. Go here where it says vignette and darken. Take that slider control, push it all the way to the left hand side. It just darkens down those corners like that. So there we go. That gives us our darkened corners. Now if you don't have that tool, you can just take a soft brush and set it at about 50% just kind of paint into the corners. Let me just demonstrate that quickly here. I'm going to, I'm just going to make a new layer here. I'll do it on this layer just for demonstration purposes. And back out again. This is if you don't have that filter, the cam correct camera distortion filter. Okay, 
take your black paintbrush and set this size pretty large, like about 500 pixels maybe. So it's pretty good size. There we go. And soft brush, make sure you're starting from a soft brush, not a hard brush. Set the opacity about halfway down, about 50 or so. And then just kind of come in here and do that on the corners. Darken the corners down and you can adjust the amount in here with the opacity to get just the darkening effect that you want. So it can be done, as you can see, just using another layer and then darkening down with the paintbrush. But the best way, if you have it, is that Photo Distortion Footer does a real nice clean job on that. Okay, so let's just zoom in again. There we are. Next thing I want to do now is I want to colorize this. So let's go over here to Enhance and get on the right layer. There we go. Enhance, come down to Adjust Color, Hue Saturation. And I want to have this into the blue range over here. I'm going to be adjusting our saturation and lightness, but I want to colorize the black and white first. So click on the Colorize option down here. It puts the hue clear to the left-hand side. You can see kind of the color range in here. We want it up in the blues for this, and the number that I actually used, you can just type this in, is 207. That's the blue that I used. Now on the saturation, same thing, I'll bring the saturation down. The number that I used on this is 12. You can adjust these numbers after you've experimented with this to see if you like a little different setting. That's fine. And then I lightened the whole thing up a little bit in here. I set this to 28. Just kind of lightens the whole thing up in there. So that brings our basic colors where I want them. I now want to adjust the values a little bit in here. And on the values, we'll be using the levels control. And that's enhance, adjust lighting, levels right there. Now on this one, the histogram here shows you where all the values are. Notice they're, they're bunched up kind of in the middle here. It's kind of all mid-tone values. Our blacks over here, there's no actual blacks. Whites are here, there's no actual whites. If I move the white and it moves the white value more towards the grays, it takes the grays more towards the white. You can think of it that way. If I move this in, the grays get closer to black. So this will increase the lightness and darkness of our image. The bottom on the output levels, this will actually decrease that. And Normally, most of what I do is up here in the input levels, but in this case, I'm going to be using both of these settings to get just the set that I want on this one. So I'll come in here. I'm going to set the first level in here. And let's set this at 86. That's it, point eight six like that. Just bringing that in just a little bit. And then I'll set the black at 50. So what I'm doing is I am darkening down the darks a bit. And I'm pushing the midtone values closer to white. Just a, a slight adjustment in there on that. I'm leaving the white where it is. Now I'm going to come down here to the bottom and do a little tweak on the bottom as well to kind of get this exactly where I want it. And now that I have those pushed down, I'm going to bring them back up again. As you notice, as I've done this, though, the contrast level in here has changed. I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. So 50 here, I'll bring the whites in a little bit. I'll bring this down to 220. There we go. So if I click off on the preview, see here we go. There's the setting without this. I'm going to preview back in again. And with these settings, it's kind of blended everything together. It has, almost looks as if there's a gray overcast over everything. It kind of comes down in an even amount. So that's what our settings are down here on the levels control. 50 on the black side, 0.86 for the midtone. Leave the whites alone. On the output, 50 and 220. And choose OK. And that gives it just about the right look for one of those professional studio backdrops. Now the last thing is that there's no texture. Look, we lost all of our texture when we faded this thing out or, or blurred it out using the Gaussian blur. I want to have some texture back in here again. I didn't want that real, real rough cloud texture that we had. So we're going to be putting in a different kind of texture. And that's filter and brush strokes. Either get to it here or from the filter gallery. This actually will bring up the filter gallery. And come down to splatter right there. 
and there's the filter gallery there's splatter and I have mine set actually still set there 21 for the spray radius and 12 for the smoothness so it, it just puts in a little bit of detail if I unclick that it's kind of hard to see here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the effect on this it's fairly subtle there you go fairly subtle so there it is without it's just real smooth and even here it is with kind of has some detail happening in here a bit of a texture added to it that's what we're doing with this one let's now add the girl to the picture come up to our layer one where the girl is and let's unhide that layer there we go I want to make a selection around the girl and then we'll clean that selection up with the refine edge tool which is a good tool for this kind of picture so I'll start off by using the lasso tool right there set it at a new selection make sure that feathering is set at zero just push it all the way to the left and that's all good then I'll start right down here make sure you're on the girl layer look for that light blue outline and then I'll start down here and just kind of come along the edge here don't get up against the edge but stay fairly close you want to just be want to be near the edge here yeah, it's come around the hair right there but not actually up into the figure we'll do that part of it with our fine edge tool and that'll do a great job for us okay then down to the bottom across the bottom up the left hand side and there's our selection okay let's go up to select and choose refine edge I'm going to set mine at 75 on my size that should be about right there it is 75 is a pretty good size for this size of a picture I'll leave all these settings at the default settings and then in here I normally use the overlay mode on this and so they come in and paint just overlapping right over the the hair and the mask just like that to stay on the hair edge and follow along the shirt and let Photoshop Elements find that actual edge for you so that really takes care of all those problems now this works out so well in this particular picture because the background is so different from the image now it's not going to be perfect there are still some things that we'll need cleaning up and that's what we'll be doing in the next couple of steps so just continue on down and get that edge there we go looks pretty good at this point let's take this out to a new layer with layer mask what that does is it gives us the original here as a safety so I can always go back to that if I need to all right now that we are here let me show you a couple of the problems that we have on this this is just refined edge problems if I go up here to the hair notice how long the edge has kind of gone white and it gets a little bit thin in here there's some white outlines around the eyelashes and down here so it's a little bit a little bit funky on that what happens is the refined edge actually gives you a transparency along that edge to help blend that in and that transparency gives you this kind of a light glow around the hair now most of that is because we're working from a white background or you know, a very very light background but we'll fix all of that that's easy to do okay miss hold the alt key down and zoom back out again the other problem here on this layer mask if I move the image try to rearrange it a little bit you may get something like that happening or at the top I make it a little bit happening that's quite a ways up I guess we're okay on the top if I wanted to move to the left a little bit I'd have this thing showing or to the right there may be another line there always oh, actually it looks like we're okay on the right hand side the problems on the left hand side and this is because the image itself is actually larger the photograph is larger than our picture in here so the picture of the girl is a little bit larger than our workspace so there's a little bit that didn't get caught in that layer mask so that's easy to fix click on the layer mask look for that light blue outline make sure your color is set to black go to the paintbrush and we bring the size down that was from our demo about the corners and about a hundred hundred looks pretty good and we set that back up to a hundred percent there we are and just paint over that edge all I'm doing is I am extending the layer mask cleaning up that black part of the layer mask up there 
and then down by the shirt. This doesn't really matter down here because this is going to be off the screen anyway, but just keep things nice and clean. So there you go. If you find yourself moving the image around a little bit and you have a white line like that, just clean that up on the layer mask. Move it over a bit, paint it out, and then you have a little bit more space to work with. I kind of like her right in that position. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's now take care of that lightness that's around that edge and the hair up here and the eyelashes. So go over to the image side, double click on the image side, look for that light blue outline, there we go. And let's go up here to this tool. Now this is the burn tool right there. The default is the dodge tool. So look for that tool and then down here in the options click on the burn tool. Set the range to the highlights because looking at that, that white area in there and they get a nice sized brush, kind of that size, and that is on mine 54% or about 50% and 85 pixels is about the right size. And let's now zoom in on this. You're going to kind of see the hairs in there, those light hairs. I'll hold the shift key down and I can actually, actually the space bar and move that over back to our burn tool. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be burning that edge a little bit, predominantly that hair and it's going to darken the hair. See right there, it's taking that light hair, making that light hair dark. Hold the space bar down to move the image. And then just go over that edge and darken that down. Now the reason why I said that at 50% was that this wouldn't be too strong of an effect. It gives me a little bit of a chance to go back and forth a bit to adjust that. I don't want to light or darken this down. I want to have that as kind of a highlight, but I do want to have the edges a little bit darker. And there's that hair in there. I don't want to darken down her skin, but I want to get the edges in here a bit better. There we go. And the same thing around the eyelashes, just like that. And then right down here. Darken down the edge of that hair, gets rid of that little bit of a halo effect. There we go. And let's now back out. And there we go. So that's how you take a picture. See, there's our original picture. You know, ignore that darkness up there. Original picture. And bring it into a custom built background. That's a little bit of a problem right up in there. You can kind of see it here, right? A bit of a dark edge up in there. That's where this mask is not quite coming in as close as I want it to. So it's just a little touch up on that. Go to the mask side, zoom in. And a couple things. I think I'll come in here a little bit on this edge with the burn tool on the figure. And that's right in there. And then I'll go to the mask side. On the mask side, make sure that you're on black. And back to our paintbrush. And I'll paint on the mask and just take out a little bit right up in there. So I'm darkening down what shows here and then hiding a little bit of what's up in there. It's just a little tweak on that so it looks a little bit cleaner. And back out and there we go. So that's how to take a portrait, in this case on a light background, and give it a studio background, a studio background effect. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 